All right, guys, today we got a 2012 Toyota Tacoma in here with a check engine light on for an EVAP leak. We've had some questions and comments about the bullseye leak detection system. Today we're going to use this system to find the leak on this vehicle. Let's get into it. We've got our bullseye leak detection system here. We're going to go through and show you how to set this thing up for testing of an EVAP system. Um, first and foremost is where you're accessing the EVAP system. Most vehicles, it's easy to gain access to the purge valve. So I like doing, doing it there at the back side of the purge valves. That's a direct shot to the canister and the tank and everything back to the rear of the vehicle. Some vehicles will have a service port where you can screw the service port fitting on. The bullseye system does come with an attachment to screw into the service ports. On the particular vehicle, we do not have a service port, but we do have a hose we can get to. I've just disconnected it here. This is the rubber cone end for the adapter. We'll just slide that in there. And we come back here on this system. It's a two-part gauge. So you start off with a CO2 tank um, or the cartridges that come with this system. They're pre-filled that come with the bullseye system. We prefer the big tank because we use the system a lot. We go through a lot of CO2. So we start with the high pressure gauge setting here. Um, if you look on this, this little gauge here, you want to preset that at 80 PSI. Once you get this gauge set at 80 PSI, you've got the EVAP gauge set up here. You want to call it here, Sherwood? And this is what is going to regulate your pressure to the EVAP system. You do not want to put more than 25 inches of water into the EVAP system. So we set this gauge here to 25 inches of water. You want to make sure we've got all the air pockets out of the system. Bernie recommends opening that valve twice. And then you see our needle didn't go all the way down. We reset that at 25 inches. All right, so now we're good. the gauge is set. We're ready to go. We're hooked up to the EVAP system. Now we need to grab a scan tool to electrically control the vent valve. So we're gonna close the vent valve so the system would be sealed um, or you can block off the vent valve. So we're gonna go ahead and raise this vehicle up. It will command the vent valve closed and continue testing from there. All right, so we got this vehicle in the air now. Just wanted to show you all the fault codes we had in this car. The P0456 fault code is the fault code that we're diagnosing here. Got a very small leak in the EVAP system. So to command the vent valve, we're gonna come in here and find our bi-directional control. Vent valve on off. So this is gonna allow us to seal the EVAP system by turning the vent valve on and off, which in, the, in an on position, that's closing that valve, so sealing the system. All right, so we've got everything here. We've got set up there. So now we're going to open this. The CO2 is now flowing into the, e, into the EVAP system. You wanna give it a, a, a couple minutes, realistically, to see how bad of a leak you're dealing with. Generally on a perfectly sealed system, once you close that vent valve and you open that valve, it's going to reach back close to the green area pretty quickly. Um, so you can see we still got a good amount of leakage there. We're still gonna climb a little bit. But. So normally I would turn this on a little bit before this time. You wanna allow the sniffer time to heat up there's a heating element in there and another thing to mention because i feel a breeze hitting the back of my neck here you want to eliminate any crosswind or anything like that while you're doing this because this sensor is very very sensitive you may have seen some of our other videos where we used it for ac leaks it is a very sensitive tool which makes it great you find very small leaks with it so all right we're up and running now. I'm gonna start on low. You can see our, our gauge here, it's kind of plateaued out. We're still tickling on the red and in the orange zone there. So 
we definitely have a leak here. So just like the AC systems, you would find all your lines and you would want to start from your entry point and that's where our CO2 is going in up there. And you'd want to go slowly down through these lines, testing every, every inch of this system. I am going to speed up a little bit because I, I already know where this car is leaking from. So, But the big key with these is you want to go very slow, especially on a low setting. Main focus, I'm just picking up my breath now. <laughs> Main focus, you want to pay attention to any any connection joints. They're very common to, to leak or break, any hoses. You want to test all that very well. One place this really shines for evap leaks is when you get those pesky, very small leaks on top of tanks. So you can bend the head, you can get on top of the tank and slowly move that around listening for any alerting. Come back here, we've got the canister. Set the canister. Still in that. And we found where we're getting the leakage. Bring it out outside of your affected area, let it recalibrate. You do not want to hit that button again. I'm going to let it reset itself. And I always like to double check. So we've got a leak in, in the filler neck area. You can actually smell the fuel on this one too. So, two things in a filler neck area. You've got the filler neck itself that can leak, um, and you've got the, the gas cap, obviously. We should have checked that, but I have already checked the gas cap. It is sealing. Um, so, the vent valve, the vent valve hosing empties into the filler neck area. So, one way I like to test vent valves is I'll come back here and pull the vent valve hosing off of the vent valve. If you remember a second ago, we sniffed this area. We had no leak. The vent valve is closed at this moment. Or is it? One more time. I'm going on the outlet of the vent valve. Picks up every time. We've got a vent valve on this vehicle that's not closing completely. I actually found this leak utilizing a smoke machine, but we saw the opportunity to explain the bullseye system to you with this vehicle because it's a good one to explain it and show it on. Um, but when you open and close this vent valve, you can physically see the flow of smoke increasing and then it would decrease, but you can still see that flow which is exactly what you're seeing here on this gauge. If you want to watch here, Sherwood, I will turn the vent valve. The vent valve is still closed or on, so I'm going to turn it off and you'll see that gauge drastically change. So now the EVAP system is full flowing. I'll turn the vent valve back on. One more test I like to do to be 100% sure there's no other issues other than the vent valve is I'll just take a rubber plug or a pinched off piece of hose. I've even pinched the hose for the vent valve. I'll just block that vent valve orifice off to where there's no flow there now. We'll come back and look at our gauge. And you got to keep in mind on this, on this system, guys, you're filling a lot of space with a very small amount of pressure. So you're filling the, the fuel tank, you're filling the canister, everything. So some of these cars, to get an accurate reading, it may take five to six minutes for it to completely pressurize and for the flow to stop. But the point here, as you can see previously, we were hovering in this area and we see this needle is just ever so slowly approaching that green zone all right so we've 
came to the end result on this vehicle, but we wanted to take this opportunity to show you some other benefits and other things you can do with this bullseye leak detection system. Sir, what if you want to kind of shoot over my shoulder here? This is the, the leak seeker foam that they utilize. On this particular leak, it's a very large leak. Really not necessary, but what I'm gonna do here is I've got a pick. I'm just gonna poke a little hole in our little rubber block off here. If I can get it to poke a hole. There we go. So now we've got a, a much smaller leak. So we're gonna spray this foam here. And you can see right there on the top side where it's starting to turn yellow. Might be kind of hard to set light too much. There we go. See where it's starting to turn yellow? That is where the CO2 is leaking out of that hole we just punctured with the punch. What's great about this foam is when you get into situations with very small leaks, which we all run into, on EVAP systems, um, if you get a pickup with the sensor, you can utilize this foam, this foam to solidify your diagnosis. Uh, there's been many a times I've seen EVAP system leaks. You can smoke until the cows come home. You'll be able to see it on the gauge, but you'll never see the smoke. Most of the time we see that on leaks, like on top of tanks, cracked fuel pumps, things like that. Um, it just for whatever reason where they're leaking and how they're leaking they don't smoke so this system is very very nice for that help us find those leaks this system also has a multitude of other benefits to it of course you've seen us use it on ac systems you've got the evap systems you can use this tool to detect uh, co2 in cooling systems to test for combustion leaks head gasket leaks and it also works for tires and wheel leaks you can fill a tire with the co2 Check it with a sniffer, spray it with the foam. You can find those pesky slow leaks. Mm -hmm. All right. I hope this was very informative for y'all. And if you have any other questions or comments about this system, please let us know in the comments. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank y'all. I hope y'all liked the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring that bell so you can get notified of our future videos. And we'll see y'all in the next one.